So you want to go fast. Going fast in Adobe Premiere Pro can be a bit of a challenge if you don't know what you're doing or if you're on a Mac. So let's go over how to optimize your PC for video editing. So first thing is first, you need a computer. Okay, enough of the bad jokes. We all know you have a PC. So tip number one is have a dedicated scratch disk, preferably an internal SSD where its only job is being used for a scratch disk. So you may be wondering what exactly is a scratch disk and why do I need one? In simple terms, all a scratch disk does is store tiny files and pre-renders for your project. Adding a scratch disk will show noticeable performance gains. If you're on a Mac, get a small external drive and set it to a scratch disk in Adobe Premiere. Tip number two is have a super fast project drive. Now this is where a lot of people get confused and where they fall into traps from our advertisers. Let's start out what not to use to keep your project files on while you edit. Now note how I didn't say store, I just said keep your files while you're editing. An external drive is not sufficient. No matter what the interface is, I don't care how fast Thunderbolt is, you're still as slow as the mechanical hard drive that sits inside that enclosure. Or even if it's a fancy SSD external drive, you're still limited by the six gigabit SATA connection inside that enclosure. So stop with all the Thunderbolt drives rock crap. The connection is awesome. Yes, I totally agree. Thunderbolt is great, but you're rocking a slow disk inside, bro. But if you're on a Mac, an external drive is really your only option. So what we suggest is getting a quad drive external dock with a Thunderbolt connection. Put four SATA SSDs in it and put that sucker into a RAID 0 configuration. And now you can get some super good transfer speeds since RAID 0 stripes each SSD and in theory you could get 24 gigabit speeds, which is pretty fast. Now if you're part of the PC Master Race, we suggest either using a large M.2 PCIe drive or an internal RAID 0 setup to keep your files and videos that you're currently working on. Or if you really want to be cool, build an external 10 gigabit NAS unit for ultimate sex appeal for all the ladies you bring into your office. When you're working on your oh so sexy wedding films, ooh. Having a fast storage device for Adobe to pull from keeps bottlenecks from being the drives, which is most of the time the cause of slow playback speeds. Tip number three is make sure that you have an internal graphics card. Even if you're on a Mac, be sure to get a model with an internal GPU. Now in Adobe, make sure you enable CUDA acceleration or OpenGL acceleration if you're using an AMD card. Any decent card will work. There's really no need for a high-end GPU. A GTX 1070 is sufficient for most workloads. Unless you're editing raw, then a better graphics card will help with processing. Tip number four is turn your preview resolution down, either in the preferences menu or by selecting playback quality on the preview monitor. This will make a big difference if you have slow drives. Tip number five is have a fast CPU. Adobe still favors faster clock speeds versus cores when editing, but more cores when rendering. The new AMD Ryzen CPUs have proven to be workhorses with video editing, boasting high clock speeds and high core counts and affordable prices but a six core Intel 6800K overclock to four gigahertz will work just fine. But the key while editing is to have fast clock speeds. If you're on a Mac, well, have fun with your two cores or four cores if you're a baller or eight cores if you're a billionaire. So in conclusion, to optimize your PC for Adobe, you still need a scratch disk, fast, small storage for current projects, a graphics card, and a fast processor versus more cores. And, not a Mac. You don't need it. Here are my specs if you would like to copy my build. It can handle pretty much anything you throw at it, video editing wise, with full playback of raw cinema DNG and high rate codecs, which if you shoot in a high data rate codec like raw, you should be converting to proxies anyway to work with, but that's a topic for another day. So guys, if you like this video, hit that like button, and if you want to stay up to date with future videos that we do here, make sure you hit that subscribe button.